Okay, everybody, this is Harlan, and I'd like to welcome you to the Mastery Seminar. We have literally hundreds and hundreds of people who are on this call, and I want to welcome you. If you've never been on a webinar with me before, um, and this is the first time, fantastic. I'm so glad you've made it. Uh, Mastery is a book that I read many years ago and then I lost it and when I rediscovered it I never put it down I never let it go um, I've passed out <clears throat> copies and copies to my friends and each person who reads it is transformed by the experience now my goal in this is to encourage as many people as possible to read the book because I believe that it's a simple book you could read it in one sitting recently but it's kind of like having a meal that's so delicious you just want to prolong it but it literally could be read in one sitting and the book is really about your life changes in your life and what you'd like to see happen in your life. So I'd like you to relax and I'm going to ask you for attention because there are going to be lots of graphs that I'm going to want you to pay attention to. And the graphs, trust me, this isn't math, this isn't science, this isn't difficult, this is, this is fun and you will enjoy it. I also expect and suspect that you're going to see yourself on certain pages of this uh, seminar. I think you're going to find that you recognize not only yourself but others. And this is a tremendous webinar of change. Now, many webinars have something where they sell at the end. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to give you something at the end. I'm going to give you an opportunity that's not going to cost you a single dime. So I'd like you to stick around to take advantage of it because it's something that could be very valuable for you. So if you're ready, I just want to make sure, I'd like you to put your hand up if you see the words, the mastery. Uh, webinar. If you see the words, the mastery webinar, go ahead and, and put your hands up. Okay, I see a whole bunch of hands. For those of you and hundreds more are joining us, we have several hundred people on the call. That's fantastic. Um, I would like you to, to put your hand up over on the right hand side if you've never been on a webinar with me before. You could slide your hand up. I'd like to see all those hands up. Okay. You click on the hand. It's on the right side of your screen. And that puts your hand up or down. Fantastic. This is going to be a tremendous, tremendous uh, webinar, folks. So I'd like you paying attention here. We're going to record the webinar. And at the end of the webinar, I will tell you how you can get it. And it won't cost anybody on this webinar a dime. So stick around. You're going to love this, I promise you. Okay, so if you're ready, I'm ready. Let's plunge in. The goal of this webinar is to help you understand the essential elements of the book Mastery. But we're going to be using that as a jumping off point to help you master your life. We're going to assist you in rapidly making changes in your life. We're going to help you understand why you failed at making changes in the past. And the goal is to help you build long-term success in every aspect of your life. And the nice thing is that if you'd like to go further into this, the only thing you need to do is to pick up a copy of the book Mastery and many of you already have and we'll show you where you can get it if you haven't gotten it. I hope that you fall in love with the book as much as I have and I've gotten feedback from many many people telling me 
that they read the book on my recommendation and it was in fact transforming. So let's jump in. So I'd like to know which one of these are you? The dabbler, the obsessive, the hacker, or the master? Now these were four titles that George Leonard came up with. We're going to go through each one. We're going to explain who they are. We're going to take time for questions. And then I'm going to give you the opportunity to go further with me in your knowledge absolutely free. And I don't, there, there are no hooks to that. There are no catches. Just absolutely free. Um, so, um, all right, so, um, here we go, here we go. Someone's typing me that they can't get on the, okay, one of my friends wants to be on this and, and they can't get on. All right, so here we go. I'd like you to meet the dabbler. This is the what the dabbler looks like. Let's go from left to right on this graph. Graph. The dabbler starts off a project, any project at all. And he gets going, he gets going. It takes him a while to get going, and he finally, finally gets underway. He doesn't see any progress. He's kind of like what they call flatlined in the medical profession. But he keeps going, he keeps going at that flatline, and all of a sudden he, um, hold on. People are telling me that they can't see anything. Okay. Okay, so here we go. Um, now I'm told that people do see things. All right, so I'd like you to meet the dabbler. He finally starts making some progress, and you see the climb begins, the climb begins, and then his climbing stops, and he comes to a plateau. He stays on the plateau a short while, and then he gives up and he crashes and burns. Okay, so the dabbler thinks about the change that he wants to make, and it could be anywhere from a few days to a few weeks to a few months, and, um, and then he starts again. And the same pattern. He starts out real slowly, and there he goes. There he goes, starting, starting, starting. He comes up, he grows, and then he hits the plateau again, and then he gives up. Same thing occurs all over again. He goes on. He starts to do something. He's on that flat line. He sees some growth. And as soon as he heads for the plateau, notice that this plateau is shorter than any of the others because he's been conditioned to give up. So he gives up even faster this time. And then he crashes and burns. Now, today, I was in the car with my son, and we were on the way for him to have uh, hockey practice 
and we were talking about people's personalities. And I explained to him that people have patterns, and it's very hard for them to change their patterns. Well, I'd like to point out to you that if you are a dabbler, it's going to take a lot of extra effort for you not to become a dabbler. You don't just overnight change. It's part of who you have been. You're not locked into this just as you're not locked into anything. But the dabbler starts and then gives up. All right? Now, many of you recognize a dabbler. Maybe you recognize the dabbler in yourself. That's okay. We're going to learn what to do to change. Okay? So everybody should have understand who the dabbler is. Next, I'd like you to meet the obsessive. The obsessive gets started on a project and he starts to see something happening and then he hits the plateau. He hates the plateau so badly that he starts changing everything. One day he does this, one day he does that, one day he does this again, one day he does that, one day he sees some progress taking him up, then it takes him down, then it takes him further. He puts all of his effort in for a last stand, he climbs a bit, then he comes down, he hits the plateau, and he crashes and burns. But the obsessive comes away saying, I tried everything, and it didn't work. Notice that both the dabbler and the obsessive both can say it didn't work. Let's go on to the next one, the hacker. By now you probably understand what's going on here. The hacker starts out, he's on that flat line that he makes some progress and he comes to the plateau. So he stays on the plateau a little while sees some progress, makes some change to make some more progress, goes up to the next level, and then he stays on that level forever. Why? Because he won't put in any more effort. He won't attempt to go off the plateau. He stays on that plateau forever. This time I'm curious where you see yourself. So I'd like you to type into the window whether you believe you're the dabbler, the obsessive, or the hacker. The dabbler, the obsessive, or the hacker. And I'll take a look. I'm not going to call out your name, but I'm just curious as to who you are. Go ahead, type it in on the right-hand side. Okay, a lot of people. Okay, um, so here's some of the stuff. My initials should be on the graph. You're going to have to tell me which graph you're talking about. Um, is the dabbler the provisional, proverbial person with a bunch of unfinished projects? Yes, very much could be. I think I'm a composite of the three. Dabbler, the dabbler, the dabbler, the obsessive, the dabbler, um, the dabbler, the hacker, the dabbler, the dabbler with a sad face, the dabbler, the dabbler, a little of each one, the dabbler, the hacker, the dabbler, the dabbler, the dabbler, the obsessive, the dabbler, the obsessive, the obsessive, dabbler, dabbler, hacker, hacker, dabbler. 
Dabbler, mostly. Some obsessive. Dabbler. Dabbler. Parts of all three. Dabbler. Obsessive. All three, Harlan. Okay. Dabbler. Dabbler. Hacker. Question mark. Obsessive. Dabbler. Dabbler. I'm afraid I'm a dabbler. Dabbler. Obsessive. Dabbler. All three of them, depending on the project. The hacker. The hacker. Okay. The obsessive. Hacker, I think, a mix of all three. The obsessive. Dabbler or obsessive. Dabbler. So maybe a hacker, dabbler, definitely. A hacker plus dabbler. Dabbler and obsessive. Hackler. Gosh. Okay. So what I want you to understand here, folks, and I'm skipping over now, dabbler, sometimes hacker, some of each. Hacker. I want to be a master. I am the hacker. Yes, I'm the Green Hornet. Obsessive. Dabbler. Obsessive. The dabbler. Gosh, the hacker. I think I'm a dabbler. Gosh, just there are hundreds and hundreds of people. And I'm looking and more hacker than anyone else. Uh, dabbler's closest. Hacker on old projects. Dabbler on new projects. Okay, so I want you to understand here, folks, um, that everybody just about is seeing themselves here. This is not something that is new, all of the above. Okay, so the hacker is the person who starts out, sees some progress, and then moves uh, into the, the plateau and stays on the plateau does something to make a change and then stays on the plateau. If you'd like an example of it, we'll go back and illustrate it for you. Let's pretend that we're dealing with someone who wants to lose weight. Okay, so the person starts the diet. Okay, this is the flat area. They are starting the diet and here they begin to lose pounds they begin to lose inches and they're very happy and then all of a sudden the phenomenal growth that they have the weight loss stops they hit the plateau they say the famous phrase repeat with me it's not working and then they give up they start again maybe it's another diet a different one Notice it takes them longer to see results. Again, they see some change. They come to the plateau. The diet's over, and um, they crash and burn. Now, one more time, they start out. They've got a new diet. This one's guaranteed to work, and they go ahead and they start seeing some changes and then the body gets to the plateau and this time after a short time on the plateau they crash and burn that's the dabbler that's why the dabbler doesn't lose weight now weight is just a metaphor for anything the obsessive is the person who has to lose weight and so they start the diet and then they lose some weight and they come to the plateau. They, of course, cannot stay on the plateau. Um, and they have to do something about it. So what they do is they, um, they decide that one diet isn't enough. They're going to switch and do another diet or they're going to starve themselves and they um, you know they start an intense exercise routine and they're trying to see the weight come off in a regular geometric pattern but it just doesn't happen that way it just doesn't work that way and therefore after making themselves and everyone around them crazy they give up, they crash and burn. The hacker begins a diet, sees some changes, very happy. They go to the plateau. They stay on the plateau. They make some more changes. Maybe they begin to exercise. They get on the plateau. But that's it. They're done making changes. They're not going to do anything. You know, 
their walk around the block was good enough in the beginning, therefore it has to be good enough now. They're not going to do a single additional thing to change, and therefore um, they are done. I hope everybody get, gets it. Um, there we go. So let's go now and meet the master. This is the master. Everybody pay attention here because this is where I want every single person on the call to be. The master starts out, same as everybody else, starts making changes and comes to the plateau. The master stays on the plateau and then all of a sudden doing the same things consistently goes up some more and comes to another plateau. The master comes and goes up some more, comes to another plateau. And this is an endless continuum. The master moves from gain to plateau, gain to plateau, gain to plateau endlessly. And that's how they keep going up level after level. Now, I guarantee you that every single person that you know or heard of in professional sports went through the exact same pattern. Every single person, without exception, went through the exact same pattern. And so what's really curious is how many people want to get out of the pattern. How many people wish that this was not the pattern? And it's because of this that so many people are stuck being the dabbler, the obsessive, or the hacker. And that is what we're going to work on changing now. Okay, so I'd like you to type in if you know some if you know someone who is a master. Do you know someone? You personally know someone who is a master. People saying you mean I'm not unique? Oh, that's right. There are people just like you. People asking for help. Okay. I think I'm too hard on myself. I've been doing yoga regularly for decades. Type in what your expectations are, the person who, who, who typed that into me. I've actually mastered the weight project four years now. Good for you. You know someone who's a master. Tell me who it is. Tell me who you, who you know who's the master. I'd love to know if you're the master. Tell me what you're the master of. A lot of you know people are masters. Some people don't. <laughs> Thank you, people who said that I'm the master. Okay. Um, Bob Proctor is the master. Frank Kern is the master. In, I am in some areas. I know others who are masters of certain areas of their lives. Uncle is a master. Dr. Kilty, I'm flattered. I actually know three masters. Yes, in his own way, I have a friend who's a master. You know people who are masters at one thing, but dabblers and hackers at others. My dad was a master. Type in what your dad was a master of. Your guru is a master? Okay. If I don't know anyone who is a master, how can I learn to become one? Stick with us. That's what we're going to learn. My martial arts instructor, good. Kevin Trudeau, Dan Kennedy, and Richard Bandler are masters. I don't know any. My sister, my mother. Um, ooh, someone knew George Leonard and Michael Murphy, his good friend. All right, so someone knows a bunch of masters. And I don't suppose that the term master could apply to you in, in some area, the person who typed that in. A person who's a manager. In wealth loss, I'm a master. Well, we can change that. 
Okay. Kendra Cleveland at Dale, my former yoga instructor. My friend is successful in everything. In sports, I'm a master. Fantastic. I'm the master dabbler. Okay. Um, I'm a master in ARDF. I don't know what that is. Do me a favor and type that in. I'd love to know what that is. Bill Hassel won the FedEx Cup today. Okay. He's obviously a master. I'm a master with my body and health, but not with finance and love life. Okay. I'm a master of weight loss. I'm a master dabbling. Okay. Someone whose mastery was walking for two hours every morning before work. He's lost tremendous amounts of weight and is consistent every day. Okay. Good stuff. My stepbrother, a Navy SEAL, training to be a doctor. Fantastic. I've lost over 40 pounds and I'm about to have a six-pack at age 62. That's fantastic. Good for you. People who have grown spiritually, yes, that's mastery. Been working out consistently for 20 years. Fantastic. So we see that there are masters here. And you guys know them. Okay? You guys know them. All right. I'm a Reiki master. Um, Milton Erickson's a master. Matt Fury is a master. Um, for those guys who don't know Matt Fury, we're going to have him on a webinar very, very soon. My wife is a master over me. <laughs> my wife is another person. My wife is a master over me, and um, and she's very good at it. Okay, so you guys are are absolutely um, people are finding good stuff in themselves. So let's go on a little bit further. This has been very very helpful to me. So what exactly is mastery? Number one, understanding, and this is where a lot of people are going to get a little upset with me, but it's something that you know, and that is that mastery is a journey or a process and not a destination. So, so many of us want to be at the destination that we just... Um, go ahead and all we think about is the end result, right? That's the only thing that matters is getting there, getting there. But that's not the way of the master. The master enjoys the practice. Now, years ago when I was starting yoga, I uh, there's a position that looked really cool. It was called side crow. You are balanced on your hands. You are leaning forward, and your legs are sticking out to the side, and it's an arm balance. And, man, I wanted to do side crow because it looked so cool. And I was able to do regular crow, but I wasn't able to do side crow. And every day I would try and do side crow until one of my teachers took me aside and said, Harlan, what's this fascination with side crow? And I said, oh, I think it would be so cool to get into that position. And they said to me, Harlan, you're so fixed on getting into side crow. You're missing all of the learning and the enjoyment of the process of getting there. And on that moment, I stopped, and I thought about it. And that was the last day that I tried to get into Side Crow. I understood that if it's something that happens, it happens. And therefore, I decided to, to enjoy the journey and not focus only on the end result. Now, 
One of the things about masters is that the real masters don't think that they're a master. Now, I knew someone many years ago who passed away, and this person was a absolute spiritual master. And the person um, went to a wedding, and the uh, crowd at the wedding saw him come in, and they all came to stare, stand and look at him. And he turned to his wife, and he said, what are they all standing and looking at? And he said, she said to him, they're looking at the master. And so he turned around to see what they were looking at. And that was a very, very important thing. He was a humble man. He was truly a master, but he didn't consider himself the master. He considered himself an ordinary person. And so this is something that um, I'd like you to understand, is that the people who are um, the people who are making the progress towards mastery very often understand that they are just ordinary people on the path to mastery and they're not there yet. Now our culture is against mastery in all forms. Yes, we love when someone wins a golf tournament like we talked about before, the FedEx Open. We love when someone uh, wins the Olympics, you know, sprints or um, uh, uh, wins a, 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 oh, the World Series, you know, pitches a, a, a perfect game. But we just want to be that person overnight. And we don't realize what those people went through to get there. Um, that same saintly teacher, his wife told me a story that um, people came to him because they wanted his advice. And he was just in agony. And his wife said, I don't understand. Why are you in agony? And he said, do you know how much energy I have to put in in order to be able to give people advice that's going to work? Do you know how hard it is for me to totally set everything aside and put someone else's concerns, you know, and, and, and rule out any concerns of my own? It takes a tremendous amount of energy. And so, folks, the master is the person who doesn't believe that they are the master. The master is the person who can do anything. Anything. You know, a, a, a teacher I knew, uh, a, um, a teacher I knew went into a restaurant and when he went into the restaurant the waitress behind the counter was was just you could see as soon as you walked in that she was just in a nasty mood and he came in and sat down asked for a cup of coffee she slammed down the cup of coffee like spilled over the side and he couldn't get his attention finally he said could I have a muffin and she took the muffin and she put it on a plate. She slams it down in front of him and walked away. And she was like talking to herself so angry. And he called her out to her and said, excuse me, uh, could you tell me who made this muffin? And she said, 
Why? What's wrong with it? And he said, well, actually, nothing's wrong with it. This is the best muffin I've ever eaten in my life. And I wanted to tell the person who's, who uh, made this just how good the muffin is. And she said, well, actually, I made the muffin. Well, he went into a 20-minute thing about the texture of the muffin, the taste of the muffin, the care that went into the making of the muffin. He praised the muffin so that the woman literally just stood still and the frown that was on her face and the anger just melted away. Her heart opened up and she became a totally different person. But people don't want to invest that kind of energy in themselves or in others because everybody wants instant cures. People want the quick fix. You know, let's use the example of, of cooking. People want to be able to prepare a meal, like from the Four Seasons restaurant in New York, um, in, in, in the microwave. And it just doesn't work that way. I used to have a cookbook from the Four Seasons restaurant. And every summer I made peach soup. And peach soup was an incredibly long, difficult recipe to make. It had sorbet in the middle of it. It was a cold soup with cinnamon stick and a design. And it took me two or three hours to make the peach soup. And everybody, there wasn't a single person who didn't like the peach soup. And then they would say, how would you make it? And I would give them the recipe. And they would say, oh, can't you just throw everything in the blender? And you know, the truth of the matter was that you could throw peaches in the blender, but it wouldn't be the same thing. It wouldn't have all of the delicate flavors. It wouldn't have the balance. It wouldn't have the texture. It wouldn't be warm from the spices and cool from the sorbet. But people just wanted flip on the blender and then we're done. That's what people want. And people want it even when they know it's not true. Now, how many times, for those of you who are in Internet marketing, and I assume that there are several of you here, how many times do you see an offer that you know can't be true? Like the offer I talk about, about the 16-year-old girl who made $400,000 in just a few months. Now, as you look over the, the sales letter and you see that, you know, everything is blotted out, the whole thing looks suspicious, uh, you know, your, the, the six-month-year-old baby that lives down the block could do a better job on Photoshop than that sales letter. And yet, there's this nagging suspicion. But what if it is true? But what if, but what if I'm missing out on the $400,000 in just a few months? And the answer is that we want to believe that there is that quick fix. We want to shortcut the mastery curve even when we personally know it's impossible, even when we know they're lying to us. Now, when you play the piano, you learn how to play the piano as a child, you're willing to play the scales. You could sit at the piano for hours playing the scales. And you're happy playing the scales when you're a child. But lo and behold, when you play the piano as an adult, everything changes. You want to play the piano for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and then the next thing you know, you think you're Beethoven. And you say, OK, I'm ready. Bring out the real music. And the bottom line is, you know that it doesn't happen that way. And that's why learning something with in meditation, we say, 
a beginner's mind is the best way to learn something. No matter what people do, whether it's making money or learning how to meditate or bake a cake or make a soup or hit a tennis ball or just about anything under the sun, anything that you want to get good at, is going to take an investment of time and it's going to take a significant investment of time if the goal is to become mastery if the goal is to become mastery everybody wants to believe that it's true that you can do this and the bottom line, as my friend Kevin has just typed in, it's the journey that brings us happiness, not the destination. Can I lose 20 pounds this week? I used to run a hypnosis weight loss clinic, and people would call me up and say, you know, I want to lose 20 pounds this week. Can I do it? And I would say, sure, come on in. And they would come in, and we would talk to them about healthy weight loss and what was realistic and what wasn't realistic and I would talk to them about the hacker, the dabbler and the obsessive and they would say but I still want to lose 20 pounds this week and I would say okay we can do it matter of fact we could lose 20 pounds right now and they would look up at me and say how can I do that and the answer I would give them would be very surprising okay we'll just amputate one of your legs that's more than 20 pounds right there. We could lose 40 pounds right now. And they would look at me as if I was crazy, and they would say, that's absurd. And I would say, it's no more absurd than trying to lose 20 pounds this week. And even though people knew that it wasn't a realistic goal, they still had the goal. So people jump from diet to diet to diet to diet to diet, to diet becomes the diet of the week. But no one sticks to a routine. Everybody, as my friend types in, Linda types in, everybody's in a hurry to go nowhere. And that's where they get. They go nowhere. And so um, this is bottom line that everybody is 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 in this real hurry to go but they don't stick to the routine health clubs know the secret every january people join the health clubs in droves they absolutely go crazy joining the health clubs in in droves and then people are there they're working there obsessively. They are there every single day. They are there morning, noon, and night. And the first week after the new year, everybody's New Year's resolution, those people are in there. They're, they're in there making all of those changes. No one's ever made better changes than, than them in the, their life. It's absolutely the, um, uh, the best possible uh, situation that they've ever done and the bottom line here is that um, nothing um, uh, nothing changes they're still the same person two weeks later the gym is nearly empty um, a few weeks later the gym is totally empty the people who run the gym know that they're not going to see the people back again. It's the same old, it's the same old. So the bottom line here is that um, that's the way health clubs make their business. You know, the truth of the matter is that people can actually lose weight with any diet. The only thing is nobody sticks to one long enough. But then the curse of personal change comes in and nobody sticks to it. They all, um, they all become hackers. They all become dabblers. They all become obsessives. And then they give up. It's not the diet. 
um, someone who knows the health club industry says that the typical gym sells memberships that are 20 times their capacity. I've known, I didn't know the actual number, but if everybody who had a membership showed up at the gym, the gym would be unable to handle the capacity. So that's the curse that personal change brings about. People hate the plateau. They absolutely despise the plateau. They don't want to be on that long period of time where they're not seeing change. But as we've seen, that's where mastery takes place. That's where the learning takes place. That's where the growth takes place. And that's what I invite you to discover. The way to mastery is to understand that learning something new is often challenging. And it's our old programming to give up. I use the example of my son very often in hockey. The other night he went to a class and the person teaching the class was a professional hockey coach. Um, a professional hockey coach and had them do the most challenging exercises that I've ever seen in skating. She was giving NHL professional lessons to a bunch of teenagers. And they were, if you're curious, they were skating backwards on one foot on the edge of a blade, hopping while leaning forward and supposed to keep their balance. And then they had to do it forward on one blade, hopping, keeping their balance. And they had to go around a series of cones. And I was watching people falling all over the place. My son was one of those that was falling. And it was, um, it was really something. He was so ready to give up. And he came over to me and I said, don't you understand that you are now moving up a level? Right now, this frustration is you are all set to go up a level. This was something that you could not do. And now you can do it. You are able to do it. And at the end of the evening, the teacher came over and she turned to my son and said, you did a great job. And he couldn't believe what he was hearing because we don't like the challenge. We want everything easy. So we are so end goal focused that we give up immediately. We're so used to from we are conditioned that if we want something, we automatically get it. And that's just not the way life is. Plus, on top of that, there's Pareto's principle, the 80-20 rule. We know that only 20% of the people are actually going to take action on something. 80% just want it immediately without doing anything, and they give up. Growth comes in aha moments and the aha moment comes on the plateau that's where your aha moment comes so right now if you think that I'm making sense and you're ready to embrace the plateau in your life put your hand up and say I'm ready to spend time on the plateau so that I can become the master of whatever I want. Go ahead, I'm serious about this. Make a pledge. You know, my friend Harv Ecker says, you know, put your hand over your heart and, and say, I have a millionaire mind. I want you to put your hand, I want you to put your hand up over here and embrace the plateau because the plateau is something that you need to master because that's where it's all going to make sense. And I'm seeing hundreds and hundreds of, of hands up. 
this is terrific. We've got hundreds of people, hundreds of hands, and I want you to understand that you are on the the road to mastery as soon as you get this concept. You know, mastery is not a constant graph. Physical activity, if you want to learn something like hockey, you, you're you're learning something that needs to go to muscle memory, and that doesn't happen immediately. Mental activity also needs to overcome stages. So, for example, if you've um, joined my blog curation program, you may not be familiar with WordPress. Okay, so you need to learn how to use WordPress. It's not really all that difficult. The difficulty is in taking the steps to make it happen. The difficulty is being on the plateau. So I want to share an expression with you is that in every case where you learn something, you need to know that confusion precedes learning. Because if you were never confused, you would never learn anything. You'd already know it. Habitual behavior situations set in. So unless we change our habits, we're going to be doing the same thing all over again. There's an expression, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. You know what? That's absolutely not true. You can. But you have to respect that learning is a process and it doesn't happen overnight. You can teach people new skills. Now, obviously, some of the skills have physical limitations. I don't know that you could teach someone who um, uh, didn't have um, use of their legs to pole vault. But, you know, I might be surprised. It might take them a lot longer. But you never know what people can do if they're determined enough. The master comes to love the practice itself. The master understands that going out there and doing the practice day in and day out is what makes them a success. And so that is important for you to learn. So the bottom line here is um, Understand that when you see a master, the master goes through the same practice that they want you to do as well. See, this is the graph that people wish they could have, where it's always moving up. Yes, the, they wish that the plateau took a split second. Maybe it's okay if I have a day on the plateau. But this isn't reality. And we need to embrace our humanity because we can all become masters. It's a matter of recognizing which type we are now or combination. Hackler, dabbler, obsessive. And saying that whatever our end goal is, yes, we want it but we respect that the journey is integral to the process. They want this, but this is the best that anyone can hope for, mastery. Because this is not mastery. This is illusion. Think about it. Does spiritual growth come like this? You know, does enlightenment come like this? If you showed this graph to any spiritual teacher in the world, doesn't matter what the religion is, and said, is this the way my spiritual growth is going to be? They would say, no. It's going to resemble the mastery curve. And once we understand that, we come closer to understanding the mastery journey in ourselves. 
But unfortunately, this is what they usually get because they're not willing to embrace the plateau as so many of you tonight have said that you're willing to do. People want w millions by tomorrow. So let me ask you, is winning the lottery tomorrow realistic? Is becoming an overnight success in business realistic? Is playing in the World Series realistic if you've never played baseball before? And the answer is most likely not. Most likely that that's not going to happen. But that's what everybody wants. Everyone except a part of you right now. I say a part of you because a part of you still clings to the idea of instant success. But a part of you knows that the road to mastery goes by way of the plateau. Every single person on this call can achieve mastery. How much do you want it? How much time are you going to invest in it? Are you prepared to deal with the learning curve? Are you prepared to deal with the plateau? Are you prepared to stick it out when that plateau seems endless? If your answer to those questions is yes, type yes into the box right now. And I'm going to show you, again, at no cost, how you can work with me. No cost, no credit card, nothing like I'm looking at all the yeses. Okay. This is, um, all right, I'm seeing all the yeses. So here's what I want from you. Okay, I want something very, very small. Okay, and I want you to stick out the plateau with me. Then here's where we're going. I want you to join the free mastermind. The free mastermind is free and always will be free. Okay. We're never going to charge you for being a part of our free mastermind. And I've created a page for people on the call, and we're going to post a link to the call on the page. Um, and I'd like you to join the free mastermind. And I'd like you to, um, you'll see one of the things, if you don't have mast mastery, pick it up. Um, and it's a, it's a, it's a joy to read. And I want every single person here to, to join, to like the page, and I'd like you to understand that you can um, help everyone else on their road to mastery. You can provide the encouragement that many of us don't have by simply supporting people on their growth curve. Friends, this is something that came to me that we can help one another in our growth process. And as you know, there's no charge for joining a page on, on Facebook. Give us a um, give us your your efforts. Give us your time. Give us your support. Help other people, and other people will help you. When you join that page, you'll see that um, we'll give you access to the video there. And tell us what you're working on. Tell us what your challenges are. Tell us so that we can help you move towards mastery. And we'd love for you to help us all spread the message of mastery. You know people who, who need this. You know people who need help. Help us help as many people as possible. Share mastery with your friends. We'll show you how to do that. Now, for those of you who are Jewish, um, this Wednesday night is the new year. And it's a new year it's a new opportunity. So whether you're Jewish or not, let's move it up a few days. And let's begin again right now. 
whatever you are working on, whatever you are frustrated on, whatever you were challenged on, that's over in and in the past. Right now, you are moving towards mastery. So please come join us. You'll see the page is a little bare. We promise to fill it in. And what we look forward to filling it in most is with your success stories. It's been an absolute pleasure being with you. And we will be doing more mastery, um, more mastery learning webinars absolutely free with you guys. And we're going to cover the topics that you want to cover. So please join us and I hope that you all will see you all and we'll all be exchanging ideas, we'll all be exchanging our thoughts, we'll all be helping other people grow on Facebook Mastery Learning. Good night everybody and thank you so much for joining me.